Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. Uh, today is the 30th installment of the Untold Truth in Detailing. Recently I uploaded a video of package composition, how you should assemble your packages and uh, lots of information about how the customer would perceive uh, the information in your packaging. And um, I got lots of positive uh, feedback from that so i'm going to take that one step further so once you've already got your packages outlined um, you know what you're going to rock and roll with um, again you can go to gary dean's detail juice nation send us a request we'll get you in there i post all the packages and stuff like that in there uh, feel free to take that stuff and you know modify it to fit what you need it to say uh, based on the outline that I've given you if you want to manipulate it. If not, rock and roll just like it is. Change the name and the information uh, at the top and uh, you're good to go. One thing I didn't add to the package information, the layout uh, that I have updated uh, now is my personal information. So I didn't have any contact information on uh, the previous video. Uh, basically because I was just trying to show you guys the outline, but today we're making a flyer. That's what this installment is about. We're taking what I've shown you already to build the packages and put, you know, to compose uh, the package layout. Uh, now we're going to apply that to sharing that with the customer. So um, that was more of information you could put on your website and that kind of thing. This is going to be something that I mean, for example, anytime I'm ever in a parking lot or even at people's houses and, you know, passer buyers or neighbors or whatever see that I'm detailing a car, a lot of people are interested in what's going on. So they'll come over, they'll ask for a card, and then they'll want to talk to you forever. Um, being able to provide them with all of the information that they need right in front of their face immediately will save you a ton of time. You don't have to explain it. It's already listed there. So that's the benefit of having a flyer uh, is so that you don't have to stand there and share the information. You can just hand them a piece of paper, say a few words to them, meet them, greet them, uh, and then let them know that if they have any questions after they check out the uh, flyer, uh, they can give you a call. Um, and go from there. So anyway, I've added some contact information. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with that. Uh, this is what I showed you guys in the last video, except for I added my detailing business name, my cell phone number, which you guys know, and then my website, detailjuice.com. Uh, all of this information will be on detailjuice.com very shortly. Uh, because that is the site that I'm using now. We, uh, I've gone to just using the one site for my services and my product line. Um, and, you know, I keep it personal all up in it. So, uh, so I've added my contact information. Uh, that's about it. Actually, I, I took the one sheet. Let's uh, bring that back down a little bit. I took the one page uh, that I was working on and I cut it in two. I got it to where everything fit twice on one page because I'll be making uh, two flyers out of one sheet. Uh, that's the smallest I can go. Uh, if you'll notice, here's an actual page that I have produced. Uh, that is the smallest that you'd want to go with your typing. I think that's uh, seven is the font size on this. I wouldn't want to go any smaller. Um, notice there is a small gap that's bigger here than in the uh, separation on the other ones. That's because I wanted this bottom line to flow. So if you notice that, it's not because I messed up. That's because that bottom line right there is even now. So anyway, so I broke it down into two per page. It works. It's functional. Um, Originally, I was going to do uh, four per page, but that just doesn't work. I like all the information that I'm able to share with somebody uh, right here. I mean, it gives them a good, it gives everybody, whatever the customer may be, a solid quality piece of knowledge about 
uh, what they can expect from you know just general detailing and then all of the extra stuff and then my gangster big disclaimer <laughs> but you know it's all about cover covering your ass and that's pretty important um, you know the big companies do it you need to do it too uh, again you know that disclaimer covers a wide array of things um, I'll just read it to you again it says all pricing listed above is based on vehicles in average condition we reserve the right to determine whether the vehicle is in average condition based on our visual inspection the pricing above should be used as a guideline and not as the end-all be-all set in stone set in stone price the final price will be quoted after our in-person visual inspection of the vehicle and agreed upon before any work is performed additional service may be re recommended and or are available per your request if you do not see exactly what you're looking for your budget will allow we can build you a custom package to better suit your needs Payment is due in full when the agreed upon work has been completed. Thank you, we appreciate your business. Now I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna put it to you just like this. Um, some of you may not feel like that disclaimer is necessary. Uh, some of you may want to change that disclaimer and that's totally fine. Um, I have had tons and tons. That disclaimer is not only based on my experience, but it's based on things that I hear happening in the detailing community where the, the, the business person or the detailer is they give a list of packages or they have a list of packages on their website and they're all listed out just like they are here uh, with dollar amounts and, so, and, and uh, time uh, variants and the customer expects for them to stick to that verbatim 100% without any manipulation, without any um, changes, uh, without any uh, variables being accounted for, without any of that. And so that disclaimer basically says, check this out. Here's a list of stuff. Here's a guideline for what you can expect to pay for X service in X amount of time. So it covers your ass and that's pretty important. So make sure that dis disclaimer is there. Um, I believe that I have written it very well. Uh, I'm gonna rock and roll with that in my personal business. Um, and it really just covers you. Um, it puts you in charge because ultimately you are the business person and they called you, you're the professional. So um, it's all about you make the rules. Uh, it's your company, it's your business, uh, so uh, act like it. It's really where we're at. So anyway, so that disclaimer is there. Uh, you see that I have already done a test printout, uh, making sure that everything is legible and that I can safely fit two on one piece of paper. Now, now that the layout is correct, I have you know I've got spell checker and that kind of thing. I do not use Microsoft Word. I use um, Apache Open Office. Uh, it's a free service. Uh, you can actually check that out. Uh, it's uh, A P A C H E, uh, and then Open Office. It's free, so you can create Word type documents. Everything you can do in Word, or I'm sorry, in uh, Microsoft Office, you can do in Apache. Um, I'm pretty sure it's all backwards compatible. So that's the logo for them. Uh, if you find that, uh, you should use it. So, uh, and that's my beautiful daughter. I love looking at that picture. She's doing what I love and she's beautiful. Anyway, uh, YouTube, yay. Um, so, that's the layout. I got, I did my test. As far as uh, manipulating uh, and, and fitting it all on one page, this was pretty simple for me to do. I basically just um, resized it till it fit there. I didn't use any fancy software. I just literally copied and pasted the one, pasted, well, I, I copied and pasted the first one, I pasted a second one below it, and then moved it up and down and, and changed the font size until it fit on one page. So that's where we're at. I do not recommend that you do your flyers on regular paper. It just doesn't look as professional. So what I have done is I've gone to Office Depot and I have picked up this fancy lime green paper. 
Um, I will most likely stick a photo of the shelf. Uh, this paper is 250 sheets, which means I'm going to get twice that as far as flyers go. So I will get 500 flyers out of this. This cost me $17.99, I believe. Um, it is 65 pound. It's pretty thick paper. It's good cardstock paper so that you're not just giving them a piece of paper. It makes it look fancier. But the coolest part about this is it is laser and inkjet compatible. I use, in my home office, LaserJet CP1525 NW Color. That is a color laser printer situation. Um, this is what I got to make my flyers out of. Again, it's far thicker than normal paper. It's going to be more like an actual flyer. Um, I do know that in your settings on the computer, you're going to have to manipulate the, uh, the size when you go to print them. You're going to set it up for the, the weight of the paper before you start to print. Uh, but this Astro Brights paper is available in pretty much every color from pastels to neons to all this bright stuff. You guys know I love the lime green, so I'm rocking and rolling with the lime green. Um, you can get it in blues and pinks and purples and every other color. Green is loud, it stands out, it gets attention, and you guys know I demand attention. I do not give people an opportunity not to recognize me. So that's what you have to do. Some of you guys aren't like that. Sometimes, you know, some of you guys aren't attention whores like me. Um, you know, and realistically, what I do won't work for everybody, and that's fine. You just got to find your own route to success. You got to find a way to get attention, because the reality is, and I'll do other videos on branding and that kind of thing. Those are coming. They're on my list, but ultimately, when you want to pass out a flyer, my point here is the flyer doesn't have to be something that you... you you go broke over. Uh, like I said, I spent, I think, $18 on this uh, pack of paper, this heavier card stock, because it's thick. It will be uh, presentable in a better way than having a printout on a standard piece of paper. Um, it will look fancier, and it's something you can do at home. You buy your paper, you have your ink, um, you can do it in smaller quantities than having to pay someone to design you a flyer. And then, I mean, with, if you don't have, if you don't have Microsoft Office, that's fine. Apache Open Office is all that you need to create this in a text document and then manipulate the sheet for however size you're going to roll with will fit on the page. Go get you some decent card stock. Have your printer ready and you can print these out 10 at a time if you want. You don't have to go crazy and spend a ton of money to get your name out there, to get the information out there. Um, you know, I would definitely keep these around if you're in a parking lot, or anywhere you're going. Uh, if you've got signage on your, your vehicle, if you don't have signage on your vehicle, I have an awesome plotter. Um, I have a, uh, well, I've got my, uh, RC car batteries on it now, but I've got a, a an awesome uh, heat press for uh, pressing shirts. Uh, and again, a vinyl plotter. I got tons of vinyl. I mean, I can help you guys with that stuff. If you guys want, um, you know, decals for your business and that kind of thing, reach out to me. It's not something that I'm doing now as a business, but I can help you with it. You know, you help cover the cost of, you know, getting it done, uh, and the vinyl and, you know, I can help you guys with that. Uh, just reach out to me if you need that kind of stuff. But you know, if you've got signage on your vehicle, people are going to see it. They're going to approach you and you have to have something to give to them because they're not going to comprehend everything you rattle off to them. And most of the time, uh, half of you guys are way too technical when you're talking about removing swirls and what this 
polymer does with this wax and what this coating will do and that they, they don't they don't care about any of that they want clean and shiny most of the time that's what they want and so handing them a flyer will get you clean and shiny uh money in your pocket so that's what you want um but it also gives you the opportunity to upsell and produce another level for the client but after they already comprehend what they're looking at and that's what the flyer does for them you can also go around and pass out flyers a lot of uh, places won't allow that in fact you'll probably get kicked out of uh, grocery store parking lots walmart parking lots for passing out flyers plus re realistically if you leave a flyer on my car that means you had to touch my car and i really i don't appreciate any of that so I wouldn't recommend that you go and pollute a parking lot with these flyers. Uh, I have done that in the past uh, years ago and I never ever had any good luck with that. Um, I, these flyers are for people who ask for them and it's a way that you can get the information to the customer without having to break away from what you're doing for too long. and have them call you later after after they look they've looked it over that doesn't mean don't talk to them it just means that here you go here's all the information so i don't have to rattle it off to you uh and so that i can get back to the job at hand and handle my business i uh, keep making that money so um again <clears throat> i'm gonna print it out just like this uh because it fits and i'm gonna do it on this paper i'm gonna do it on that printer you don't have to have a laser printer. This works very well with inkjet. You can see right there, um, all of those different types, laser, inkjet, and copier. Uh, it's 65 pound uh, cardstock, um, 250 sheets, eight and a half by 11, standard size, but I'll be able to fit two flyers per page. Uh, and I'm actually gonna cut this video now. I'll be right back. I'm actually gonna print one out, show you what it looks like, cut it in half, and then we'll be good to go with that. All right, I'm actually working on printing my paper now. I uh, opened it up. You can you can tell how thick this stuff is. It's awesome, awesome. Uh, and that's so that it doesn't look so generic on a piece of paper. Uh, and the color is so that it sticks out. So if they place it somewhere, they know that it's green or whatever color you chose. Uh, it just makes it look a little bit more professional than regular paper. Um, and so you can see I loaded my printer with that paper. Um, I actually just put 10 sheets in there. And what I'm doing now is I'm setting it up in the printer. I actually was able to go to file then print properties and uh, in, in here in the properties, I was able to set the page thickness uh, and in the properties is where you'd go. I'm not, I'm no computer expert even though I uh, work for the Geek Squad at Best Buy. I was a supervisor of the Geek Squad uh, for two years, believe it or not. Uh, so I'm kind of techie. And this was, man, this was years ago. Anyway, um, so properties is where you can set your page size, your page. Uh, I mean, if you've got a legal printer, you know, a legal size printer, which I think is like 18 inches tall. Anyway, so properties, I set the thickness of the page uh, and it was uh, rated in gram, rate, gram weight, which is uh, 65 pounds or 175 grams is what that page, these pages are. You'll see right there. So number of copies, you see that it's uh, sized properly, two per sheet. Uh, I'm gonna do 10 sheets. I put 10 in there, which will yield me 20 of these. Um, and it is on my LaserJet CP 1525NW print. Boom. Let's see how those come out. And then, boom, we have flyers. Just like that. It's on nice thick card stock. All my information is there. It's very nice and typed and laid out properly. Um, I explain the products that I'm using. I explain 
the name of the packages, the, the price variance, the time variance, and then again, the all important disclaimer. And that's it. So now, just cut it in half and uh, I'll probably, because I had to fit it on here uh, so tight so it fit, it left a border on top, border on bottom. What I'll probably do, I actually have a paper cutter. I have to grab that and I'll probably buzz off the top and the bottom so it doesn't look funny. But that's it. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll be right back with you. All right, I do not have a paper cutter. But I do have a nice pair of scissors. So, I'm gonna take my nice flyer here, and I'm going to be very careful and just cut it evenly. And if you had multiples to do like I do, um, you could absolutely do multiples together, but for this demo, I'm just going to do the one and show you how we get our end result. I may end up getting a paper cutter. That way all my lines are super straight and even. Now if you got the money to go and just go to a store, um, go to a place and have these made, do it. Nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to show you guys how, you know, cause I'm, I, you know, a lot of these videos are focusing on, you know, trying to help you guys get involved and get into the business and just start making money. <clears throat> um, you know, again, we can, we can trim off a lot of this excess. Um, I would definitely prefer, uh, using a paper cutter, which I'll go out and get today to make it easier but there you go everything they need to know right there looks great looks professional it's not expensive um, you know after ink and you know the card stock and a little bit of your time you know uh, for example there was so if I get 500 out of there let's do some just quick math if I get 500 uh, out of the deal divided by We'll say you spend ten dollars on ink. So we'll say you spent thirty dollars divided by so thirty bucks equals uh, these cost you seventeen cents a piece. And if you add one of these to every, so I've explained before, ten percent of your total job should be what it costs to do. So for example, if you're costing, if you charge a customer a hundred dollars for a job, it shouldn't cost you more than $10 to do the job. From the gas to get you there, um, to you know, the gas in your equipment, to uh, the flyers, to the product that you use, 10% is your buffer room for what it should cost to get something done. Um, the other cool thing you could do is uh, if you wanted to do something with like your logo, if you've got a logo that is simple enough to put on here, you could do that as well. Uh, for me, I don't want to do any of that. Most of my customers already know who I am uh, or their referrals from someone who does. Uh, I'm not real worried about it. Um, again, manipulate it to look and feel the way that you want it to look and feel, but I'm giving you an idea, an example of how to go about doing it. And these look good, they look professional. Um, you know, again, I may end up adding the Detail Juice logo on top. What I didn't want to do is have to use one whole sheet. I was trying to get more value in each one of these. Um, but beyond that, adding a logo will take a lot more ink. And if you're doing it at home, uh, like my laser printer costs less than an inkjet would would so if you're gonna do this at you know on your own I would I would absolutely invest in a nice laser jet like like the one that I have I believe that one was 200 bucks um, and then do your own stuff and then you know if you want to put a logo on it that's fine uh, I don't intend on passing out thousands of, of these uh, again you know I, I own several businesses and the detailing services is something that I keep up so that I can 
test my products in real world applications. Um, not the technical bullshit that you hear on the internet uh, from some keyboard cowboy who's never even done it. Um, you know, all of all of everything that I talk about with my products, I've, I've actually done and experienced. So I know that they work. Um, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass because I'm a, you know, some rich dude that just started a, a product line and uh, has a bunch of people working for me that has never been in the real world. This is what, what I do. So anyway, keep it simple. That's how you're going to keep the cost down. Uh, if I were to use this and then put my logo at the top, I not only would have to use a lot more ink, uh, which would be more costly, but I would never be able to get two of these uh, out of one sheet of paper, unfortunately. So, you know, I feel like all of this information that's there is necessary, but that's where we're at. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, truly appreciate each and every one of you guys that take the time to watch my videos. And um, if you got any questions, 813-846-4406. Uh, is this the end all be all of flyers? Nope. But it's a real good way for you to get started, get rolling, uh, and look professional at the same time. Uh, again, can they look better? Absolutely. Can you put your logo on them? Absolutely. Uh, will you spend more money? Yes. Is it necessary? In my opinion, no. I believe that exactly what I have done is exactly what you need because it has all the information that they need without all, all the extra fluff. Um, and let's be honest, your logo is not important. Your phone number is very important. Who you are is very important. Your web address is very important. All of that is listed on that flyer. Uh, nobody cares about your logo. It's not important. Uh, what's important is you taking the time to get the information to the customer, you providing that customer with quality information, and you transferring everything that you uh, talk about into the work that they want you to do uh, within the budget that they have in their mind and reality. So. Uh, take that for whatever it's worth, guys. I have used these types of flyers before. I intend on using them uh, this season in my own detailing business. Um, let me know if you got any questions. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.